Hey everyone, and welcome to the tutorial series part 5. Uh, today I just want to show you um, something I just kind of left out, and then we'll be moving on to um, probably a death, a death proc, a proc that checks your death, and then you go to your appropriate respawn point. So first I wanted to point out um, this circ. Like I said in a previous tutorial, uh, a circ is equal to the current one who's using the code. So if we go back to play of verbs, so the person who's using the code is E. So E would equal to the circ in that line of code. I just wanted to make that extra bit clear. So if you want to make the player um, use this code, you would say in wherever you're writing it, you would say something like circ. Um, well, that is if yeah, if the current player was circ, then it would probably be circ um, health check. But don't want to confuse you too much, so for now I'll just say that. And I also want to show you the reference guide. Um, go to beyond.com. Show you right here. Um, just go to developer and go to reference. Get to the DM reference. Okay, and let's just ch let's check one that we've already done before. So there's a bunch of data here, but we'll just go to the proc one. And I believe we used get step. Uh, where is it? So G G G G get step get step. So this is like a proc, like the health. Um. The health. Does the health take any parameters? What parameters? Health takes no parameters. Sometimes there's certain um, variables you can put in, um, like var slash whatever. Um, it might be confusing, but when we make a proc um, that has that takes a condition, then we'll uh, go through it a lot slowly. Um, but we use get step. And if you look here. Get step takes two uh, conditions. It takes a reference. So this is the point, this, your starting position. Yeah, location of new position. Uh, so we did our own position. So we're getting this step of our own position in um, that line of code where we were doing the for loop um, to the direction. And the available directions are north, south, east, west, northeast, northwest. In our current code, we did it um, the direction that the circle was facing, so the player or the current user was facing. Just wanted to kind of show you this and maybe get you more comfortable with procs and how there can be certain perimeters and how there's already um, built up procs already made for you guys to use. Um, but that's as far as I want to get into that. So I just wanted to kind of touch up on that just in case it wasn't clear. So yeah. So what do we want now? Procs. I have a proc folder. So since there's a lot of things that could cause someone's death, we might want to make a proc that um, checks if this mob dies. Okay, so let's start with the uh, proc death check. Var slash killed. Now, why did I name my variable var slash killed? I name it var slash killed um, because you will be putting a a creature, you're testing a creature that is dying, that's going to be um, tested if it's dying. So I'm going to call this creature var slash killed. And we do that by going, oh I should delete that from last time, by going e dot death check. Oh wait. 
Zerk the death check. E. So we're checking E if it's dying in this um, Pacific Rock. You could set it up the reverse way, but I don't know. I just I like sitting at my death check like that, having the uh, killed um, as a condition. Um, so now let's think this out. What would we need to check um, to check if something has died? We would need to check if their health is at zero. So once we do the health, the health checks after the hit, we want to say, okay, is this health at is this health at zero? And this is done with um, don't think we've introduced them uh, if statements. And if statements um, can compare things. So you want to compare health. What do we call it? We want to compare killed. Killed is dying. Dot HP is less than or equal to zero. So if is like a comparison. So you're comparing your HP and you're seeing if it's less than or equal to zero. You're seeing if the thing that you said was getting killed is less than or equal to zero. So that's basically how you check it. And if it is, well, just delete, delete circ, or delete, no, delete killed. Uh, kill.hp, undefined bear. Oh, that's right, you need to declare that it's a mob first. You can't just say killed because it just thinks it's, it doesn't know what type it is. So make sure it's under a mob, a mob tree, and then I'll get the uh, mob variables. So errors can always help you learn, because then you know more about the language, you know what what causes it to go iffy. So. We'll just attack him. And he gets deleted. So... I guess I can go right on to some simple AI now. So enemy, and this AI I'm doing is actually, I wouldn't recommend it. It's not the best AI to have, and I'll tell you why later. But it's a very simple AI to set up, which is why I will show it to you for um, as a tutorial 5. In a later tutorial, I might show you a more efficient way of setting a uh, AI component up. This way isn't bad, it's very easy to set up, and it's very easy to understand but it's very inefficient um, so new so new uh, yeah I should probably explain that so what happens when new is called basically what happens is new is called if you put new under a tree of mob enemy new will be called when a mob enemy is created so when you first run up your game and every enemy is created, they all run new. And if they all run new, then you can do stuff like while circ. This basically means while it exists. So circ is the current um, tree, mob enemy. So while the mob enemy exists, And while while is another loop that's similar to four, it'll keep on looping until the condition is meant. So while will keep on looping through the code I'm going to put down here until until circ until circ doesn't exist. When circ doesn't exist, it exits the while loop. But while circ does exist, it will continue this loop. So while circ exists, for bear slash mob slash m in view we'll say three so what's this do so basically for mob slash m for mob in its view um in three tiles three tiles in any directions um basically is what this three stands for uh, 
view again, you can look at the Beyond References in view. I guess I should make that more common. View takes in a distance and the center, where you want the center to be. And so I want my center to be my current object, and I want the distance to be three tiles away, and view is um, every direction. You can read this if you want yeah, to better understand it. Okay. Walk towards... Um, I need to look, we'll look at the walk towards. We'll look at walk towards just so I don't mess up. So walk towards takes in a reference. Takes in mob on the map. So its starting point would be Cirque. So Cirque is going to walk towards M. Delay in world ticks between movement. Usually I like to say zero. And speed equals, let's just do three for now. And other problem I'm going to tell you right now is it's not going to differentiate between the player right now. Right now, it's going to walk to every single mob. And this is how you need to think as a computer scientist. You need to think in small incremental steps. Okay, I've done these steps. Um, everything is done in small incremental steps. So what I'm missing, I'm missing a step. I'm missing a step that checks if the... Um, if this mob is actually um, a player or not. And this can be done through if m dot client. And this should work, but we'll see. Yeah. Running, we're running. It's not one load. Let's run again. Hmm. <laughs> Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> My bad, that's why it was taking so long. So I'm sorry if any of you guys did that. Um, this... I always make this mistake. But the while loop, basically, this will overrun your computer like crazy. Um, and this is because the while loop is repeating in zero seconds this... Um, entire thing. So what you want to do is you want the program to sleep. Um, let's just let's just leave it at one for now. The one stands for um, ten milliseconds, I believe. And so sometimes it's good to make mistakes because then you learn out of them. So yeah. So this kind of just overloads your computer if you don't have the sleep statement because it's trying to run this. Um, too fast and your computer doesn't like it. Okay. So now you got all these guys following you, not following other guys, just following you. You can attack them, you can kill them now. You got a basic setup now. Um Yeah. And let's just actually I can probably end add into this tutorial how to um, hurt enemies so actually you know what I'll leave that to next tutorial next tutorial I'm gonna be focusing on how to how the enemies could potentially attack players and I'm gonna tell you why this code is not the best efficient code to use and then I'm gonna tell you but it's good for beginners it's good while your game's starting out, but later I'll show you maybe, or I'll talk about more efficient methods. And I will add variables, so I'll start adding stats to calculate health damage. 
So you have a strength stat, you have a defense stat. And that's all for now. I hope you uh, learned and hopefully made some progress. Uh, thanks for watching my video. And goodbye, good day.